So, well, we know that social media can be used for many things that are good and sometimes evil, as we've seen with the terrorist group ISIS spreading their hateful message. But it would appear that many of us are taking to social media not necessarily to push out our opinion anymore. It's just more to have some sort of dialogue without the opinion. How does this work? Well, a new Pew uh, research has the following details, that there's a so-called spiral of silence going on out there. They have found that 86% would discuss the NSA in person. Of course, that's the national security issues. And 42% of people would take to Facebook and Twitter to post about their opinions on something. To make some sense of this for us, I'm joined by our Sun News contributor, Vanden Jean, and Michael Edwards, who is a partner at Adrenaline Digital. Gentlemen, thanks very much for being here. Thanks for having me. All right. This is what you guys do at Adrenaline Digital, right, Michael? I mean, you focus on social media campaigns. What do you make of this Pew research, this so-called spiral of silence? Yeah, I mean, I think it's uh, some interesting research for sure that uh, Pew's released uh, today. Um, I think that it's common sense, so really when you think about it, people have political views, but even in person or in large groups, they're less inclined to share them. And when you're putting something out there, particularly an issue like the NSA and talking mm -hmm. about it, um, I think that it is a hard thing. I think that people, when they are online, when they're talking about something controversial, there's that fear or uh, that kind of nervousness that they're going to get some backlash from people um, and their peers and their social network. All right. So this... Ta the idea of talking about something which would be perceived, Vanden, as controversial. They use the NSA as, as an example here, but uh, we've seen a lot of people get in trouble about talking about all sorts of things. You know, the birther movement in the U.S. Get, gets people in trouble when mm -hmm. they start talking about that because what often happens is if you take a controversial position, agree or disagree, then all of a sudden people are pouncing on you. And that can be a pretty tough thing to slog out all the time. Yeah, lot, some journalists know. will do it. Some of our colleagues here at Sun do it mm -hmm. constantly. But for the average person who's not in the opinion-making business, that's not something that they want to no, do. No, absolutely not. But I got to say, for me at least, when I first saw this, it was a little strange because, I mean, the people I follow, when you're in this business, people even on Facebook, they're all opinionated and they mm -hmm. want to get their opinions out and say, I think this, I think that, oh, and, and get into debates and whatnot. I mean, I used to do mm -hmm. it too, but it does make sense because as you said, a lot of people don't like to take flack for what they stand for. They don't want to debate it. They're not as agenda driven, not even agenda driven sometimes, but they, mm -hmm. they just aren't as passionate about it. So people like to use social media to tweet to their favorite stars, sure. to talk to their friends, not so much give opinion. I have a a personal example I'll, I'll tell you guys. I, of course, worked for the most controversial political character on the planet <laughs> right now, and that's Rob Ford. Yes. And I often get tweeted at where someone on the left or, or someone else in the media will say, you just wrote a critical column about Rob Ford, but do you forget that you were the one that got him there in the first place? You know, all that sort of stuff. I do not engage, um, Michael, because I don't feel I have to rationalize my actions. I don't feel like I need to justify to some random person that has five followers because then all of a sudden my group of followers will know who this person is. Is What's your thought on that? Well, I think, uh, I think that's an interesting point, and I think that it really plays into the different types of people that are using social media and how they use it. So mm -hmm. you're a little bit of an atypical user. You're probably not in that sample of people that you uh, did their research on. Um, so when you look at who you follow and who you engage with mm -hmm. versus who the average person follows and mm -hmm. who they engage with, it's very different. Um, one interesting thing here is the way social networks are designed and the way they're, the, the, the trend and how they work and what you see on them is very much focused and optimized or tailored to what your interests are. So I think what we're starting to see a lot, maybe not so much for you, mm -hmm. but for the average person using social media, is that they're starting to see more and more of things that they agree with and less and less of things that are controversial or take an opposition to, to their thoughts or their beliefs. So in this kind of sense, it, it makes sense to me that people feel like they're a little less inclined, mm -hmm. but also sometimes if you only see things that you tend to agree with and people that you tend to agree with, you're less likely to engage there as well because they've already said something that, that you would have said anyway. Yeah, well, So there's and, a dynamic there. For and that's sure. why, you know, we'll post something or we'll like something on Facebook or we'll retweet it on Twitter or Vanden. But, you know, even if you think that's something that you're saying, like, you know, your favorite movie, for example, everyone's got a damn opinion on it, mm -hmm. so then you're going to get jumped on anyway. Well, at the end of the day, social media, remember, is for fun, mostly. That's why we use it. Mm -hmm. Again, a lot of people like to post their opinions about things and chatter about it. 
on the political side, a lot of people like to stay away because they want to be, you know, per, they want to look as if they can talk with their friends, not lose friends. Because I'm telling you, I've actually lost friends on social media because of the posts that I've made that may or may not have been somewhat political. Uh, so at the end of the day, people want to get along with each other, chat with each other, and not really get into mm -hmm. that controversy. Okay, now let's go to sort of the more practical side of this. You know, this is your business, uh, Michael. When you have a client that comes to you and they want to do something in, in the world of social media. We're going to talk a little bit more about the ice bucket stuff in a moment, but what is your advice to them now? Because we've seen social media campaigns go completely off the rails. Like a company will start a hashtag of something and then everybody sort of just you know hijacks it and does their own thing. Yeah, uh, so what we really focus on is grassroots stuff. Mm -hmm. So I think there's a much higher stakes for brands who mm -hmm. try to do something creative because um, they're explicitly trying to sell their brand or they're trying to sell their product. Mm -hmm. What we focus on a lot more are movements. Mm -hmm. So looking for people who really, really passionately believe in an issue or believe in a cause and finding ways to engage them and activate them to go out and talk to other people. Mm -hmm. And in the context of sharing and in the context of the research that we've been talking about, when you can find those core people, so maybe not the half that say that they wouldn't share their opinion, but the half that say they would, that's still a giant part of the population that's out there willing to engage and willing to discuss something and have that discourse in, a, in the social context. Um, so when we're talking to clients, what we say is to focus on those people, mm -hmm. focus on your core people first, just like in politics, and then start to grow the conversation. Okay, we're going to take a short break. We are going to continue this part of the conversation and specifically move it over to the ever-growing in popularity ALS Ice Bucket Challenge. That's next. We're here to accept the ALS challenge, and I'm happy to donate to this very worthy cause. Now our challenges. I challenge Dave Collier, the president of the Canadian Association of Petroleum Producers. I challenge Mark Little of Suncor Canada. I challenge Ben Von Burden, the CEO of Shell. And I challenge Stephen Harper, the Prime Minister of Canada. <laughs> Well, we've seen so many of the Ice Bucket Challenge videos and yet another one right there, Leonardo DiCaprio and his misguided views on uh, the Alberta oil sands, putting out the challenge to Prime Minister Stephen Harper. It's not the first time the PM has been challenged. So let's talk about this in the context of what's been referred to as slacktivism or even this new term, clicktivism. What is that all about? I found a couple of guys who are much younger than me and get this stuff a lot more than I do. <laughs> Vanda Jean, our Sun News contributor, and Michael Edwards, who's a partner at Adrenaline Digital. Okay, young man, what is clicktivism now? Uh, clicktivism is this new term. Apparently, it's no longer slacktivism because of this ice bucket challenge. Okay. People are actually doing, I guess, something, and so they're calling it clicktivism because why? You click on the video, you watch the video, and you keep clicking along, use the hashtags, tag the people that you want to get this done. So clicktivism is this sort of in-between stage of activism and slacktivism and uh, it's quite interesting. Okay, so just by virtue of us clicking on the link, Michael, um, for any charity, in this particular case it happens to be ALS, uh, a very worthwhile cause in, in my view. They've raised so much more money this time around than clearly they did last time. No doubt that getting the clicks will then, you know, you click through a few videos as Vanden mentioned, mm -hmm. it will compel you to perhaps donate and, and that, must, that must be working if you and yourself haven't been challenged or challenged somebody. But I want to ask you in this, in, in this other context of this, you know that there are so many charities now that are saying, find me an ice bucket challenge, yeah. find me something that is going to get the, the fire that this one took off with. Yeah, for sure. I think every charity and every fundraiser out there is probably sitting in some room thinking about what's next. If uh, not ICE, what can I do to mm -hmm. try to go viral and to raise awareness here? Um, I think at a certain point, though, you see uh, diminishing returns. People start to get a little bit tired of uh, different charities doing different things to try to entice them to take action. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's definitely an appetite out there for more of this, just because it's so positive and it's something that's so easy to do. And it's a lot of fun. Like when you watch these videos of celebrities or you watch these videos of people just in their backyard with some friends, you really see an enjoyment and a satisfaction that they're doing something That positive, everybody else right? is, right? Yeah, I mean, exactly. one of my favorite videos is of uh, Laura Bush dumping it on George W. <laughs> Because yeah. <laughs> he's there, well, it's not very presidential, and then she just, then, like, it's, it's very cute and simple. Um, but and another way of looking at this, though, too, Vanden, I'm going to start with you on this mm -hmm. one. 
do you feel guilted into doing it? I mentioned the Prime Minister and Leo DiCaprio pushing it, you know, challenging him again. We know why Leo's doing it. He's trying to embarrass the Prime Minister because he's got his, as I said, misguided views on the on the oil sands. But um, does someone feel guilted into doing it then? Or is is this like shaming us into to taking up the challenge? Absolutely, there's guilt into it. Um, I mean, look, I haven't been challenged myself yet, thank God. Uh, if somebody did, and I, if, if anyone out there, one of my friends are watching, please don't do it, because I'm telling you right now on air, do not challenge me. Uh, I, I would you know what's going to happen. It. I know, I kind of brought that upon myself. Yes, but yeah, did. it guilts people into it because it's like you're tagged mm -hmm. on Facebook. If the viewers know, you know, everyone knows what Facebook is. You can tag your friends. Uh, your friends can then see that you've been tagged in something, and when everyone's saying, do it, do it, do it, yeah. eventually, you're going to do it. Well, and sometimes people just want to see others make an ass of themselves, Michael, <laughs> by, uh, especially after the cold bucket of water goes down, you know, you have to deal with that and the reaction thereafter. Sure. Yeah, well, I think it really humanizes people, too. When you get to see someone uh, like uh, LeBron James, or you get to see someone who's very famous mm -hmm. do this activity, you start to see an, a component that's consistent in all of the people that are contributing. Uh, but really when we think in the terms of slacktivism here, this is a charity that's raised $70 million. Last year they raised $2.5 million. It's incredible. Six wow. months ago, no one would have told you what ALS was. Mm -hmm. Today everyone can. So clearly they've tapped into something that really works and they've really been able to punch above their weight without actually spending very much, if any, money doing it. So yeah. it's a pretty amazing thing. Well, will it last? Uh, you know what? I think I think it's going to last a little more as more and more people do it. You know, there's a diminishing return here. You know, less and less videos will be out there eventually. I'll give it another month. Michael? I say as soon as it stops getting warm enough to be willing <laughs> yeah. to do it. Probably well, we're actually, we're actually having summer now. It's yeah. the end of August, and, you know, we're, this yes. is, the nice weather is finally upon us uh, to a degree, so perhaps there will be more. I think it's going to take, uh, I think it still has some legs. We'll see what happens next year. Well, we've, got, we've got an Indian summer. So apparently, yeah, it's going to continue maybe a little longer here in Canada because mm -hmm. we love the heat and we want to cherish every last moment of it. Dumping a bucket of ice water, that's a Canadian way to celebrate <laughs> it. <laughs> Absolutely. Great discussion. I want to thank uh, Michael Edwards, who's a partner at Adrenaline Digital and our Sunday's contributor, Vanden Jean.